begin by placing three and a half cups of all-purpose flour in the bowl of your stand mixer, one teaspoon of sugar, two teaspoons of salt, one packet of instant yeast. Using the hook attachment, mix to combine. Then add one cup of lukewarm water and two tablespoons of olive oil. Now mix on low until a dough has formed. This should take about 10 minutes. And after 5 minutes, make sure that the dough is mixing in properly. Continue mixing for another 5 minutes until the dough is nice and smooth and no longer sticking to the sides of the bowl. And we just made pizza dough, yay! Then shape the dough into a ball, just like so. Place the dough back into the bowl and add a splash of olive oil. Now, cover and keep it in a dry place and let it rise for one hour. The traditional steak used for Philly cheese steak is ribeye thinly sliced. Transfer the steak to the freezer for one hour before you slice it. Then after one hour in the freezer, the steak should be somewhat solid. Using a very sharp knife, go ahead and thinly slice your steak. Riba is best for its tenderness and marbling which adds flavor to the Philly cheese steak. However, you may use other cuts of steak, such as sirloin or top round. The key is to thinly slice the steak for the classic texture of a Philly cheese steak. And once the steak has been all sliced up, it's time to get cooking. Now, using a large skillet over medium heat, add about one tablespoon of avocado oil. Saute a medium-sized onion diced. To the onion, add a pinch of salt. Saute the onion until soft and begins to caramelize. Once the onions are cooked, push them to one side and add the steak. Increase the heat to medium-high. We want to cook the pink out of the steak. Mix the steak with the onions and season with kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper, both to taste. Get the full written recipe at kelvinskitchen.com. Once most of the pink has been cooked out of the steak, add slices of provolone cheese. As the cheese begins to melt, remove the skillet from the heat and set it aside. And after the dough has doubled in size, transfer to a cutting board. I am making four Philly cheesesteak calzones, so we're going to divide the dough into four equal pieces. I am using a food scale to make them the same size. So we have one pound and 12 ounces. Now divide that by four. If my calculations are correct, we need seven ounces of dough for each calzone. Then shape them into balls. Using a rolling pin, roll them out to about 8 to 9 inches wide. Line a large baking tray with non-stick parchment paper. Sprinkle cornmeal over the parchment paper. The cornmeal is going to help with preventing sticking, plus it's going to create a beautiful texture underneath the calzone. Once the dough has been rolled out, add some of the Philly cheese steak to the center of the calzone. And to close the calzone, grab one side and stretch it over to the other side. And if your calzones are looking a little bit discombobulated, don't worry, they're going to look amazing once they're baked. Meanwhile, preheat the oven to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 260 degrees Celsius. To seal the calzone, use your fingers and the extra dough to fold and pinch and pinch and fold and pinch and fold and go around until it's all closed. And before we bake them, we need to brush them with an egg wash. Combine one egg and one tablespoon of water. Transfer the calzones to the prepared baking tray. Right before baking, brush the calzones with the egg wash. Looks like I added more Philly cheesesteak to this one instead of the other ones. Oh well, it looks like somebody's gonna have a fatty. Using a paring knife, cut small holes into each calzone, about three holes per calzone. By doing so, you are helping them release some of the heat and they don't explode in your oven. Dust the calzones with freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Now, bake at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for about 18 to 20 minutes or until golden brown and beautiful. Beautiful just like you. Do you know the history of calzones? Watch this. Buckle up, folks. 
we're diving deep into the delicious world of calzones. These tasty turnovers have been tantalizing taste buds for centuries. Originating from Naples, Italy in the 18th century, the calzone was a pizza you could take on the go. A sort of culinary superhero, the calzone swooped in to save the day for hardworking folks who needed a hearty meal but had no time to sit down. Its name, meaning stocking or trouser, might not seem appetizing but once you bite into the crusty exterior to reach the gooey, cheesy, saucy inside, you'll understand why it stood the test of time. From its humble beginnings in Italy, the calzone traveled the globe, evolving with each culture it touched. In America, it got supersized. In India, it got spiced up. But no matter where you are, the essence of the calzone remains the same. It's a pocket of pure, unadulterated joy. So the next time you dig into a calzone, remember its rich history, and appreciate the journey that brought it to your plate. Bon appétit! And that's the end of our delicious dive into the world of calzones. Never forget the rich history that comes with each bite. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, give it a like, and share it with your fellow foodies. Looking to try your hand at making these tasty treats? Make your way to kelvinskitchen.com for a step-by-step -step guide on crafting mouth-watering calzones. Until next time, happy eating! And now back to Kelvin. And if everything goes according to plan, your Philly cheesesteak calzones will look like this. Transfer them to a wire rack and let them cool off for a few minutes before you dig in. There you have it, Philly Cheese Take Out Zone. Enjoy, buon provecho. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye. Yeah.